ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lee Zhang. I'm the manager of Partners in Recovery New Horizons in Sydney from Australia. You may ask, why being a Chinese woman presenting an Australian project in Spain? You can call that globalization, or you can also say that's integration. And being the third Australian speaker in this section, I will, not, I will want to demystify that not all Australians look like the actors and actresses in Bondi Rescue. <laughs> in fact, the, the, the photo underneath is actually an actual street view of the suburb I worked in. In that suburb, we have 20% of population speaks Chinese as their first language. When we think of Sydney, of course you think about the beautiful harbour views. But like all other major cities in the world, there are a lot of people experiencing poverty and, ex and homelessness. And that's what makes the better pathway to housing projects for mental health issues projects meaningful. The better pathway to housing projects takes place in the Sydney, in the Western Sydney. The area has a population approaching 800,000. It in, includes part of the inner city, oh, sorry. It's included part of the inner city. When it goes to the further west, it become quite suburban. Of course, it's very multicultural, as I'm here to testify that. It's a stone's throw from the Harbour Bridge and the one of the closest beach in bon is Bondi, which is about 10 kilometres away. The principle of these projects is that appropriate and stable housing is one of the prerequisites in helping individuals with mental health problems achieve and sustain their recovery. The project has four components. The first one is senior leadership. The project reports to the Healthy Strong Community Steering Committee as part of social reform led by the Australian government. The membership of Better Pathway to Housing is consists of senior managers from health, family and community services, partners in recovery, community housing providers, and a consumer representative. A local government, has, local government council has been included in the membership later on. Not only can we make decisions, but we also have the influence to, for systems change. When we first started in 2015, we experienced blockages between multiple agencies. But the committee determined to make a difference while we're facing very complicated issues. And all these issues are intertwined and can't be solved with one single, single solution. Just to help you understand what kind of issues we were facing, I have a sample here. In our local area, 25% of people discharged from mental health inpatient units go to unstable housing. Over 6,000 people lived in boarding houses. In fact, in our local areas, we have 43% of the boarding houses of the state. The wait list for public housing is long. When I say long, I mean people have to wait over 10 years in order to get a place in public housing. Even if they're lucky enough to get onto the priority list, they still have to wait for over a year. As you could imagine, for people with severe long-term mental illness, one year is a very long time. Anything could happen. Fourth, the funding for supported housing, they were from different sources and they're quite disconnected. These slides just demonstrate a level of support and stability in housing model. So we have unstable housing at the bottom and then boarding houses, 
community social housing, support accommodation, and have hospital at the top, having the highest support. As you will see, there is a gap here between supported accommodation and hospital, and that's the major area the project had looked into. And these slides demonstrate we have took actions in multiple areas, and we have filled the gap. Where's the pointer? Here. The project started in 2017, so four years on. The project's still going very strong, and we have achieved amazing results in four areas. The first one is strict rough slipping. The project initiated the strict counts. The count occurs at midnight, and all rough slippers are counted by a group of volunteers from service partners. One of, the actions, one of the actions was one of the community managed organization has found a support outreach support worker to work with cohort to work with this cohort. Second, boarding houses. As I said, 43% of the boarding houses in the state is within our local area. So the first thing we did was to map what's out there. Although boarding houses provide an affordable alternative for homelessness people, most of residents in the boarding houses are disconnected from their families, others, and services. In order to help the residents in boarding houses, a partnerships and multi-agency multi-agency partnership has been set up. We set up a new service called Better Boarding Houses Community Living Support Group. This is a wraparound support model to work with people in boarding houses. Three, public and social housing. We know that health and housing are not always working in good terms and they can be quite disconnected. Therefore, with the projects, we have the, the Department of Health and Department of Housing actually has signed a service agreement to employ a, social, a mental health social worker to be the clinician between housing and mental health. These clinicians also help with fast tracking the housing applications for people with mental illness, with severe mental illness. Four, supported housing. When we did the mapping, we realized there were 54 supported housing beds in our region, and most of them were orientated to low support needs, like four hours per day. A subsequent plan was to increase the beds for medium, high, or even 24 hours support. This has been successful. So far, we have 69 supported, house, supported accommodation beds in the region, and 33 of them are medium, high, and 24 hour supports. And we also created a system to make the supported housing more integrated. So I'm going to talk more about the two 24-hour support models. The first one is Urella House. The Urella community-based alternative model is the first model of its kind in New South Wales. The model is a collaborative partnership between Sydney local health districts and New Horizons, a community-managed organisation. The Urella facilitates relapse prevention and recovery promotion. It provides more intensive community support or divert people from hospitalisation, which is a step down. As well as providing residential support services following discharge from hospital, which is a step up. So the Urella House provides 24 hours overnight support by New Horizons and their resi residential support workers. The clinical 
and ally health staff member employed by Sydney local health districts. They work in shifts in the house. There are 10 beds accommodating for both men and female and women in the house. The length of stay is maximum 28 days. The other 24 hours support model is Camperdown units. The Camperdown units commenced in July 2017 to, to provide a new model of residential supported housing to people with higher mental health needs. It's a partnership between a community managed organization, Sydney local health districts and a community housing provider. The program cooperates 11 consumers in their own units. There are 24 hours of overnight support on site. The, clinical, the clinician from the Sydney local health district provide dropping support to the residents in there. The length of stay in Camperdown units is as required and expected to be at least two years. We also developed an online referral pathways for all supported housing. Due to the funding and historical reasons, there were several paper-based referral pathways to supported housing, and they all managed by different organizations. Most of the information were installed in a staff member's head instead of in the system. In so when the clinician wants to make a referral or find the best fit of support accommodation, the clinician have to make several referrals just to try their luck. Not only this was time consuming, it also allowed people to talk about consumers information in different forums. Therefore, this online referral pathway has the information of different houses and the referral pathways and the key contact person. A key clinician also appointed to be the one, to be the person central point for all the referrals for supported accommodation. What remains to be done? In the Plan of 2018-17, the better path up uh, 2018-19, the better pathway to housing projects will continue to refine all the areas we have started. We are determined to creating to create a more integrated model for housing pathways for people with severe and inducing mental illness. If you like to consider this model for your own area, I would suggest you look at these four key areas supported housing, public social housing, boarding houses, and rough sleeping. Last but not least, I would like to thank the integrated teams behind me to, to make these projects successful and also make this presentation possible. Thank you.